In today's video, I'll talk about jobs, job titles and identity. Welcome back to All The Honeys. In case you haven't seen me before, I'm Marta. Let's start with one of my all-time favorite short stories by Anthony DeMello. It's very possible you never heard of DeMello, but he happens to be one of the people whose writing profoundly affected me as a teenager. I don't hold on to many books, but this one has a special place in my fragile heart. It's in Polish, so it's pretty useless to you, but you can get it in English, of course. And as usual, I will link it in the description of this video. Anyway, the Menno was a Jesuit priest and psychotherapist from India, so it's a very interesting combo already. Of course, the book has some religious influences, but it's not the main thing. This book are his essays on awareness. But the story I want to share with you today is about today's subject, identity and jobs. I often share it with my coaching clients. So here it goes. A high-flying lawyer's toilet gets blocked and so he needs to call in a plumber. The plumber arrives, fixes the toilet and lets the lawyer know how much he owes him. The lawyer exclaims, how much? Even I don't make that much as a lawyer. And the plumber just looks at the lawyer and replies calmly, yeah, I know, I didn't either. And that's why I retrained from law to plumbing on identity. The gist, the morale of the story is obvious. You're not your job, so you don't identify yourself with your job title. The benefits of not identifying yourself with the job title are numerous. First, you will stand a better chance to avoid identity-related overspending. You know that old saying about buying stuff you don't need to impress people you don't like? The more accurate one when it comes to your job is buying stuff you don't even want to get accepted by the people you just work with. Many professionals come with certain lifestyles, spending habits, status symbols, and you don't want to fall for that nonsense. The second benefit, you will also develop better boundaries. I remember working at a fashion startup once and having this awkward encounter with one of the editors there. The woman was what you'd call a super career-driven, ambitious. One day I was making myself a morning coffee and asked how she was doing. When out of nowhere she burst out crying and started telling me how she felt hopeless about her team, how they were all useless and unreliable and how she stressed out about everything and she didn't know what she was doing, where it was all going. Of course, I immediately started consoling her and soon, typically for me, started explaining to her that this is her job and this is her here and this is not one thing, there are two entities. And so there were boundaries. Boundaries mean less stress. Um, I can unfortunately tell you that method worked as she quickly went back to being one of the most ruthless co-workers I've ever had. And the startup went bust a few months later. Boundaries are important. And finally, the third benefit is that you will also most likely treat your fellow humans with more kindness. I once went to return a gift to TK Maxx and was surprised to be served by my neighbor. It just never occurred to me she worked at TK Maxx. Because ultimately, it doesn't matter. What do I care? Do you care what your friends do? What they do for a living? What their job titles are? Probably not. Then stretch that attitude towards everybody else on defining your game. I keep banging on about financial independence because I genuinely wish it for everybody. For you, for your neighbor, for your daughter, son, mother, father, brother, whoever. I know how it changed me and how it's changed my attitude to work. Financial independence lets you do what you want to do for as long as you want to do it and when you want to do it. But you know what you need to have before you even start considering financial independence? independent thinking. That's step number one. And when it comes to your job, you do it by ideally as early as possible 
analyzing and defining the game you want to play. Let me stress it again, the game you want to play. Maybe you love being in a corporate environment and move between different departments with pretty much the same duties but ever-changing job titles. Maybe you don't. Maybe you call yourself an entrepreneur or solopreneur or a one-man show CEO because that sells better than saying you're a freelancer. Maybe you don't. A thought leader instead of a content creator? You know where I'm going with this. By the way, I wouldn't be myself if I didn't recommend you a great book on discussed subject. Here it is. And it's about what it says it is about, so no surprises. So your job title aside, what's the game you're playing? A friend of mine just qualified as a Montessori teacher and was offered a part-time position in one of the nurseries. The pay is so pathetic, she tells me. But I want to start somewhere before eventually running my own nursery, so I'm taking it. She knows her game. She knows this is how to progress to where she wants to go. My game, I'm focused on getting enjoyable design contracts that will let me avoid company politics and keep working as a money coach. That's my game. What's yours? And finally, we add meaning to everything we do or we take it away. And so you can have a meaning inside or outside your job. There are no rules here, but please don't get attached to your job title and the identity built around it. After all, the main purpose of your job is to pay the admission fee to whatever game you're playing. And I hope it's something bigger than your job title. Now, a special shout out to Perry from Stupid is the Norm, who inspired me to add my two cents to this excellent video. If you still don't know Perry, go and check out his channel. The link, as always, in the description. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.